Welcome back to another edition of Gen Sports Corner. Back at you for one January 9th, 2021. Out of 2020, back with my co-host. Introduce yourself, sir. My name is Ryan from Ryan Sportscast. What's going on, everybody? There we go. So we're going to get into the NFL playoffs. Unfortunately, my Raiders and the Eagles are out of the playoffs. But on the bright side, we have the number six pick in the draft. So we'll talk about that, too. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so before we go into that, let's get into the festivities for this weekend. So first off on the docket, you hear me clearly? Yep. Okay. Um, first off on the docket, we have the Colts and the Bills playing at 1 o'clock. Excuse me, 105. Bills favored by six and a half points in the spread. Um, what do you think about this matchup, man? Um, I think it's a very good matchup. I think um, the Buffalo Bills right now are on fire. They're going into the playoffs, and I think they look like a, um, a team that can potentially – I think they have the best chance to actually beat the Chiefs if they get past the Colts, man. And um, I'll tell you what, man, they're, they're looking hot. I, th- I got – I definitely got Buffalo covering the spread. And um, it, it, I think it'll be a good game because uh, the Colts have a pretty solid day. And, you know, Frank Rick up there making things happen, man. But, um, but yeah, I, I got Buffalo in this game, man. Yeah, so I, I was looking at a preview of the game coming up, and you look at both sides of the ball. You look at the Bills. Uh, high, Like you said, a high-octane offense. You have Josh Allen and then the big acquisition. And this is something that – this is another draft pick that burns me. You know, and we're going to talk about the Eagles as we come to it, but – we have yeah. been plagued at the wide receiver position for years on end now. Pretty much yeah. since the time that we drafted the Sean Jackson and Jeremy Macklin yeah. back in, you know, it seems like eons ago. And <clears throat> Stephon Diggs, I can't remember what year it was. It might have been 2014 or 15. I remember him being in that – in a draft class he was in, I remember, remember a bunch of wide receivers being, getting drafted. That I, I would have liked too, but I remember Stephon Diggs coming out of the University of Maryland in Baltimore. I, rem- yeah. I remember seeing his tape, and I had the same feeling that I had about Russell Wilson. I actually uh, tweeted Shil Kapati about Russell Wilson, and I had the same feeling about Russell Wilson that I had about Stephon Diggs. He looked fast. He looked explosive. He didn't look like he had exceptional straight line speed and 40 time probably threw a lot of people off since he was like 5'10", 5'11", and didn't run like a 4'3". But when I saw him on tape, he just looked explosive and hard to cover. And my thing was, it might have been after the after the Jeremy Macklin release mm-hmm. or, or whatnot. Oh, not not release, but he didn't, didn't resound. I'm like, go get this guy, Stephon Dix. You lost Jeremy Macklin to free agency to the Chiefs. You traded away... Uh, no, you you cut uh, Deshaun Jackson. Go out and get Stephon Diggs. He's in the same mold. He's fast. He's quick. He's explosive. He's in the fifth round. Like, why not draft this guy? Like, what? You you draft these, you know, no disrespect for the people that got drafted in the later rounds, but you draft these guys that when the people look at the TV, we can see, like, they're solid players, but not what you're drafting them. Like, Stephon Diggs, it's like, it was clear as day to me. And I had I have been actually saved. I had like different playlists for football. And I had Stefan Diggs highlight tape saved in one of those playlists because he just stood out to me. And now yeah. you're seeing that. It's like how I'm not an NFL scout. I can see that. How do you not have the foresight as somebody who's getting paid to evaluate and scout players and draft them? How do you not see that? And he's yeah. gonna and he's gonna have a chance to go out against this Colts team. And he has a hundred was hundred plus receptions, fifteen hundred yards, tops in the NFL, and over ten touchdowns. He's on fire, and he's right. gonna go out there, and they're gonna have a tough time dealing with this guy because he can run all the routes in the route tree and do them effectively. He's not a jack of all trades. He's a master of a few routes, and he's very very good at what he does. And there's mm-hmm. there's no way to shut him down in the same vein as Devontae Adams for the Green Bay Packers, as you're going to see. You can only contain them and limit the things they're going to do, but they're going to get theirs to a certain extent. Right. And you have this Bills offense. Josh Allen, who's had a breakout season, 
37 touchdowns, I think 10 interceptions, 107, 107, uh, 107.9 pass rating or something to that nature. And he's just, he's really being judicious with his passes. He's using his legs and combining all that into one total package. You, you, you add Stefan Diggs into that. They're going to be tough to stop. stop. You have Cole Beasley in a slot, Cole Beasley, who has, you talk about Danny Amendola for the Patriots and, and, and Edelman and whatnot. Cole Beasley has shown that he's not just a, a cool little slot receiver. He's a weapon. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm telling you, like these guys in those, in those meeting rooms for the Colts, they're circling number 11 on, on that, that play chart. Oh, because absolutely. they don't talk about him like Stephon Diggs, but he is the matchup nightmare. In my this opinion. Is, man. Yeah. So you and and then you have uh John Brown. Am I breaking up? Am I good? No. No, okay. you're you're straight, man. Then you have John Brown who's coming back healthy. So you have all those weapons in the passing game. Man. A a decent running game with single turn. It's it's nothing crazy, but with Josh no, Allen's bad. leg legs, he he makes things happen in the running game because you have to worry about the read option. So right. they're going to be tough to spot stop on offense. The Bills are back. Never thought I would say it, but we haven't said that since Bill Clinton was in office. The Bills are back. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going against a solid Colts defense. You have a Colts defense that has a really good run defense. They're top five in run defense. Pass defense is kind of in the middle. Um, they they give up some plays in, in the red zone here and there. Um, they give up plays. They, they seem like a bend but don't break defense, but they're really good against the run. So yeah. that's going to be an interesting matchup to me. And then on the flip side of it, you have the Colts with Phillip Rivers. You have Pascal. You have T.Y. Hilton, who has starting, started to come back into his own in the last three or four games. And then you have really the, the, the tail of the tape for me for the Colts is the running game with Jonathan Taylor, the running back. Mm-hmm. He has been on fire in the past mm-hmm. couple of weeks. You know, one of the best running backs in the NFL, honestly, besides Derrick Henry. And we don't really talk wow. about him that much. That, that's crazy. Right. So it's going to come down to me. And the Bills' defense is is really solid. Um, not as good as last year, but they're really solid. Um, for me, I'm picking the Bills, but it's going to come down to are the Colts going to be able to contain Josh Allen and that passing game? Because if they don't, it's going to be a long day. I don't necessarily think that they're going to run all over the Colts, but the Colts typically have problems with a team. like The, the, the Tennessee Titans are another weird matchup if they were to face the Colts in the first round because – their run game is so strong that it overpowers the strength of the Colts, which is their run defense. Whereas mm-hmm. the Colts' strength really is their pass defense, and you're talking about they're going up against the strength of the Bills with their pass offense. And I think the, the, the Bills' pass offense is so effective because of Josh Allen's legs because in, on third down, I think the Bills are top three in the NFL. Mm-hmm. So – if you're going to stop the Bills and you can't get them off the field on third down because Josh Allen is scrambling for four yards and, and moving the chains, you're going to be a, in a world of trouble. So for that reason, I'm going to agree with you. I'm going with the Bills on this pick because I think they'll be a little more consistent, not a little more, but I think uh, fairly more consistent on offense. And their defense is good enough to the point where the Colts cannot play a game where they make mistakes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I just don't um, – you said the Colts' pass defense isn't as good. They're solid. They're, they're, they, they, they have – they can – they get turnovers. They're, like, they're uh, seventh in the league in turnovers. They have uh, – well, it's interceptions. They have 15 interceptions on, on the season. So, they, they can pick the ball off. But mm-hmm. they're the type of team that sits back – in a uh, a zone defense and makes you make mistakes. They're not somebody like Miami, like the Dolphins, that comes after you and, and just tries to mm-hmm. put that heat on you. They have a different type of pressure to try to apply on you. They try to put that mental pressure on you where you cannot make a mistake, have an errant throw, or they're going to make you pay. True. This is going to be a – this is, might even be a more interesting game that I thought. I haven't done a lot of research 
research on the Colts. So it might, it might even be better than I thought, but yeah. I, to me, I still just – Stefan Diggs, man, and just his explosiveness and the way he plays, I, I just think they're – I don't see a way – I think he's going to have over 100 yards today, man. He's just – He's been yeah. solid this year. And plus, you got Josh Allen with his legs. It's, just, it's going to be uh, tricky for the Colts. I see him having a pretty good day, but might even be – I think it's going to be a close game, truthfully. Yeah, and we're going to get into that more. Like I mentioned before, Stephon Diggs is one of the draft picks I wanted the Eagles to get, which they did not. He was rated uh, in as a third-round pick. He ended up going in the fifth round, I believe. Damn. Or, or he might have been a fifth-round pick in – rated a fifth round pick and went in the third round. I can't remember. Either way, I know a lot of scenes passed on him, including the Eagles, and he was one of the guys that I really wanted the Eagles to draft. Is it was a no brainer pick in my opinion. Yeah, and they missed on it. Hey, wasn't he a free agent in the the off season before the Bills picked him up? No, he got traded for two first round picks. Oh, two first round picks. Or maybe wow. just one, but it was definitely one first round pick for sure. He got traded for. And it was uh-huh. it was well worth it. No, of course. Look at him. And then you look at the Colts, too. Their opponents, they traded a first-round pick for DeForest Buckner from the 49ers. And that has paid off massive dividends for them in their defense. It's a big reason why their defense has been stingy this year. Oh, yeah. DeForest Buckner, dude, that dude is a monster. Yeah, another dude out of Oregon from uh, Chip Chip Kelly's squad. Yeah, he's right. Him him and Deion Jordan won that. Ducks defense. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the Eagles weren't in a position to pick him, but you know that we'll get more into that. But the next game on the slate are is the Rams and the Seahawks. Rams playing in Seattle. <clears throat> Seahawks favored by three points. Game starts at four forty. What do you think about that game, bro? Um, this game can go either way. Um, the Seahawks defense has been has, they've been historically bad this year. So um, they've been kind of up and down. This Like, they started off hot. Russell Wilson seemed like he was going in the favor of MVP, and then they kind of fell off a little bit. So this is a game I see going either way. But it's in Seattle. Um, I mean, the, the damn J-E-T Jets just beat them. So, <laughs> I mean, who knows, man. I think I got Seattle in this game, at least covering the spread. Yeah, I'm with you, man. And <clears throat> honestly, I actually would have had the the Rams winning this game <clears throat> if Jared Goff was healthy, but he's not. He's coming yeah, off that thumb surgery. Oh, that's right. He's hurt. I forgot about that. Yeah, he, he's not going to be right. They can say all they want to in the media and, you know, talk him up and say, you know, he's feeling good and all that good stuff, all that jazz. But he's going to get in there and not – He's not going to be able to grip the football the way he wants to. Mm-hmm. And even when he was healthy, the first game, they rolled over the Seahawks. Seahawks defense was horrific. Anybody who had the Seahawks defense in fantasy football, whoever was playing them that week and you had them starting a wide receiver, they were a must start, right? Oh, absolutely. Second half of the season, they changed their fortunes completely. They are not the Legion of Boom by any stretch. However, they have been a solid to decent defense in the past six to seven games. Six, seven games, yeah. Right. Jamal – dude, Jamal Adams has nine and a half sacks. Think about that. At safety. Damn. That's, nine and yeah, a half sacks. That's ridiculous. I, I don't think I've ever seen a safety with that many sacks. I, I have to look at the stats. That's off the charts ridiculous. Yeah. Jeez, nine and a half sacks. I didn't even know that. Weren't they like really bad though in the beginning of the season? And then, like, yeah, they, they they were historic. They weren't just bad; they were historically bad. Yeah. So for them to change their fortunes around to being halfway decent, mm-hmm. they're to the point where they're only allowing 290 yards a game, and they were allowing like 300 plus. So to get that average down under 300, they had to be busting their ass. All right. Jeez. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so they they've been playing solid over the over the past second half of the season. And you're talking about a Rams offense that they're predicated upon the run. But the one thing that Seattle has done well all year, they stopped the run very well. They're top five in run defense efficiency. Mm-hmm. And, and yards per per carry in um rushing touchdowns, I believe. So like they're they're very good against the run. So if you're able to stop the Rams in the run, 
most of their passing yardage comes off of play action, right? Mm -hmm. So if they cannot run the ball, they're a dead duck in the water. All right. Especially Jared Goff, if you bring pressure on him and he doesn't have that run game, he is Eli Manning without a run game. That's the best comparison I can think of. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Right. So they're going to go into this game with a halfway hand for Jared Goff, a good run game, but they're going against the strength of this Rams defense. And this Rams defense, oh, just to mention, they're first in the league against the pass, and they have Aaron Donald coming after you. Oh, boy. So, you know, Jalen Ramsey on DK Metcalf, shut his ass down. What do you think is going to happen this time around? I think he's going to do the same thing. Uh, he probably will. Sure Jalen Ramsey is going to shut that ass down, and they're going to have to depend on Tyler Lockett and Russell Wilson running around to make plays. And I don't think that's going to be nearly enough to beat the Rams. That's just my opinion. Right. That's a, that's a solid prediction because, you know, Jalen Ramsey is one of the best corners, if arguably not the best corner in the league. Um, he's – it's going to be a tough matchup, man, for DK. I, you know, I feel for him today, but I, I think he'll get some catches, but – it's going to be a tough matchup. And I have to correct myself. I said it's not going to be nearly enough to, for, um, to beat the Rams. And I, I, I have to reverse that and only because Jared Goff is not right. So yeah. if Jared Goff was right, I think the Rams win this easy. But yeah. if Jared Goff having that messed up hand, I think the Seahawks are going to be able to overcome those deficiencies in the matchup. Yeah. It's going to be a good chess match, I think. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, so I'm going with the the Seahawks in this game, and, and the spread six six and a half points. I'm going to go by I'm I'm going to say like five points. I'm yeah. Going by five points. I, I, yeah, I say about probably five, maybe a field goal even. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. That's what I think. Um, so that so that's that game. So for so far we have the Bills winning against the Colts, the Seahawks winning at home as well, and then the last game today. The Washington football team, who would have who, who thought they'd be in the playoffs versus at home, at home, after the raid on the Capitol <laughs> against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. What do you think about that game, man? Well, um, I think it's going to be a massacre. Um, I think <laughs> you know, the football team is going to get blown. You know, they got a not so healthy Alex Smith, who's probably not even going to start tonight, it's looking like. Mm. And uh, that's just going to make it that much worse. So, Are they um, going to call back Dwayne Haskins? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to call back to being the foreskins because they're going to get absolutely <laughs> destroyed. But it's going to be bad, man. I'm telling you. It's, it's because of the fact they're not going to be able to get anything going offensively. And that defense is going to – I mean, that defense is really good. Don't get me wrong. I think Chase Young is without a question defensive rookie of the year. But I think they're just going to get – it's it, – I'll put it to you like this. Chase Young should have never ran his mouth because he's going to be eating his words tonight, man. Oh, uh, what did he say, man? <laughs> he said, uh, oh, I'm coming, Tom Brady. Did you see, um, see on – um I saw it on Facebook. He said oh. when he was in the tunnel, I'm coming, Tom Brady. I'm coming. I was like, yeah, Tom Brady's going to be coming, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> you don't disrespect TB12. And I, I, I'm not a big Tom Brady fan, but. I'm not either. I'm at Tom Brady's neck. He's going to bite back, man. You got to know yeah, that. He, yeah, he's going he's gonna to feel the bark tonight, man. He is, it's not going to be pretty. I, I really do, don't even think this game is going to be close. I think wow. it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be unwatchable. <laughs> oh well. I hope I'm wrong because I like seeing good football. <laughs> but Chase well, never ran his mouth. Well, Ryan, your sentiment matches the odds makers because the Bucks are favored by nine points. Yeah. So uh, I, I don't cover the spread, bro. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, I don't have too much to say about this game because I completely agree with you on that. Um, Mike Evans or no Mike Evans. Man, the football team is in a tough spot. Yo, hey, as much as they're a division rival, kudos for them for making the playoffs in who knows how many years since Joe Gibbs came back in, what, 2004, five, something like that? Yeah. So that's been like 15 years? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but they're about to – they have so much going on. 
outside of football down there, let alone um, with getting rid of Dwayne Haskins and all the yeah. all the different moving parts <laughs> just going on down there. They've done a great job to make the playoffs, but I think this is where the buck stops, no pun intended. And uh, they move on. <clears throat> the Bucks move on to play Green Bay, who is most likely going to be the winner of tomorrow tomorrow's game, which we'll, we'll talk about in a few seconds. So, yeah, I'm going with the Buccaneers in this game as well. So that's, that's the three games for this slate. Bills win. Seahawks come up with a W. Buccaneers go ahead and beat the Foreskins. That's the game slate for today. <laughs> and tomorrow, um, Sunday, we have the Ravens versus the Titans, Bears versus the Saints, Browns versus the Steelers. First game on tomorrow's docket, 105. Ravens playing against the Titans in the wild card playoffs. Baltimore, Baltimore favored by three points in the road. What's your thoughts on that? I think Baltimore will cover the spread. Um, I, I, see, this is another game where it's – this is going to be a very interesting game. Um, if they do what they did the last time, holy crap, wasn't this the same game last year? Yep, it's the rematch. Oh, boy. So this is a redemption game for Mr. Lamar. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I got the Ravens in this game, man. But, um, it, it could, I mean, it could be the Titans, though, to be honest. But I, I think the Ravens will get redemption. I think they will win this game. Um, it's, But it's all going to depend on if Lamar can sling it. Because if they shut down like they did last playoffs, they figured out that without him running all over the place, that he's not a good, accurate passer. And when you're not a good, accurate passer in this league in the playoffs, that's where you're going to come up on the short end of the stick sometimes. Because, yeah, as you know, his accuracy is not that great. I think that word could come, become a problem, but I, I still think they're going to win this game. Do you think that Lamar is inaccurate? Or do you think that he's an accurate passer who had the game move too fast for him in the playoffs last year? Or a combination think, of both? I think it moved too fast for him in the playoffs last year, truthfully. I think it's just maybe a little inexperience. And um, maybe it's something he had to figure out. Maybe he watched the tape and realized it, it, it was probably a learning experience for him. I think that'll help him this time around. I think he has become a little bit of a better passer, but I still think there's moments where you see he throws back to back inaccurate passes. Like he's just he's not accurate. That's yeah. a fair point. And that's gonna So I'm going with Baltimore in this game too, but I think it's the the spread is is accurate because mm -hmm. You talk about a Titans defense that has not been nearly as good as they were last year. Dory Jackson not playing up to the same level on the outside. Their pass defense gets shredded from week to week. However, come playoff time, Mike Rabel, he's been in the big games. And circa last year, he's coached in the big games against not only the Ravens, but he did it against Bill Belichick. You know, mm -hmm. he, 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 he vanquished the Sith. Dark City is, was gone. Like he <laughs> sent him to the to the shadow realm with his own tricks, his own Jedi mind tricks. Right? Yeah, man. So <laughs> he might not have all the tools he wants, or his defense might not be playing up to the level that he wants. But he is the definition of a guy that didn't have the most athletic ability, but always knew he was always on time, like FedEx, always there, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so. He's going to try to use smoke and mirrors and try to have Lamar Jackson seeing ghosts again. And I think Lamar Jackson is going to see some ghosts, but he's going to be composed enough with his legs to get it done. Yeah. To me, this, to me, this is a coin flip. I'm going with the Ravens, but I think it's more of a coin flip than some people think. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Yeah. So, uh, Ravens by three makes sense to me. They're both 11 to five. We'll see what happens. Next game on the docket, the Saints against the Bears. Saints favored by 10 points at home. Thoughts, sir? Cover. The, oh, they're covering, man. That, they're, <laughs> that Mitchell Trubisky is about as good as a hefty trash bag. Like, he, just put him in the trash, bro. Like, he's, he's, not, he's not <laughs> at times. He has his moments, but he's just not that good, man. And, and the Saints, I just think, are that much better of a team. You know, they got a really good defense. You know, Malcolm mm -hmm. Jenkins is playing well. Good for him. Um, 
I just think they're that much better of a team, and Drew Brees is back and playing at a high level. So I just I got the Saints this one, man. Absolutely, I'm going with the Saints. I don't think they'll cover the spread. I think they'll win by eight points, but I think eight they're going to control the game because yeah. the, the Bears defense. They're good, man. They're good, but they have not been playing as well as last year where they were just lights out. Right. And, uh, yeah, that that pass, that pass game, for me, really, it's going to be the defense for the Saints. I think the defense is just going to – the defense, the Bears, the separation between – the separation in – the Bears defense is not going to be dominant enough over the Saints offense as the Saints defense will be over the Bears offense. I think they're going to wipe the floor with the Bears offense. Absolutely. And that's going to be the difference for me. And the, Saints, the Saints offense is going to be able, be able to put up some points against the Bears defense here and there. So Bears offense is not going to be able to keep up. No, nah, they just can't. They're not that good. That's the problem. When you have a quarterback who's not, you know, that as Obviously, as good as Drew Brees, it's going to be hard to keep up. And at least, I mean, if he was somewhat good, like if he was like, what's a good example here? Like uh, maybe, no, Kirk Cousins is a bad example. He sucks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like if he was at least somewhat good, like he was decent, you know, it, I think it would be somewhat a competitive game. But Question, if Mitch Trubisky is having – a bad game and stinking up the joint. Do you think Nick Foles comes in at halftime? Uh, yeah, I do. I, I absolutely do. What would happen? Just hypothetical. What would happen if Nick Foles not only comes out at halftime if Mitch is sticking it up, but wins a game against Drew Brees in the fourth quarter? I'm be sick to my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> no. <I'm> just, <laughs> now I don't regret us, you know, letting Foles walk and just. Oh, yeah, I'm not saying that in regards to the Eagles. I'm just saying if he does that'd, it again, like he is just – It's a proven track him. record. That would be great for him, man. I'd, I'd be happy for him, but my gosh, can you imagine? <laughs> so I, I, I personally, I think that Mitch Trubisky is on a, a short leash. Yeah, I agree. Game. Absolutely. Because especially if you're getting the doors blown off of your team, going in the halftime, he's going to be like, yo, Mitch – Appreciate what you did for this this year, but yo, Nick, <clears throat> loosen up, bro. It's time to go in. Yeah, I'll see why not, man. I mean, if if you're getting, you know, beat bad. I mean, even if it's like somewhat, like if they're losing by, say, like if it's twenty four, if it's twenty four seven, do you? I, I would think Nick Foles is coming in. There's gotta be something, man. Yeah, yeah. He's on, like you said. I think he's on a short at least too. I do agree with that. Twenty four ten, it's iffy. Yeah. You gotta give him a chance, though, man. Yeah, it's just it's a shame, but we'll see. Sorry, Dom, but I kind of I as as it's a Bears fan, I know, but I, I'm yeah. picking the Saints. We're picking the Saints to win this game, and then the last game, <clears throat> and this is very unfortunate. Steelers playing at home against the Browns. Steelers favored by six points. Eight fifteen start time tomorrow. What you got, man? Um, are there still players from the Browns out? Yes, and I think the coach is still on the COVID list as well. Kevin Stefanski. Yeah, I got the Steelers on this one, man. Yeah, I just, man. Um, it, there's too many people out. That's the problem. And when you have a lot of your weapons gone, it's it's going to be tough for them, man. I, I got to go with the Steelers. Yeah, it's really unfortunate because the Browns did so well coming off of last year where they were so inconsistent mm-hmm. and they're wondering if Baker Mayfield is the guy and – who's going to be here or who's not. And then he comes out and just like – and I've and I I've argued with people about Baker Mayfield last year. I'm like, yo, he's he's good. It's just the offensive line, just the same way I say with Carson Wentz. I'm like, Baker Mayfield does not suck. He just has to worry more about getting his head taken off than actually throwing to Odell Beckham Jr. Yeah. And this year when he had some time, had a decent line, he lit it up. Like – Yeah, he played well, man. Oh, my gosh. Give him a line and, oh, guess what happens? He actually has a good year. So he's slinging it to Landry and Odell Beckham. Even with Odell Beckham out, he's slinging it to Landry and Rashad Higgins and then Joku and and everybody on that team. Like he and then you have Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. They're a complete team, and he's slinging the football. 
a, a freaking the last two weeks, he was just throwing it all over the field. And everybody, everybody is like, oh, now people see what Baker Mayfield can do. It's like he's been doing it, bro, all last year. He just didn't have a line in front of him. So now he's actually yeah. producing. And now you get to the playoffs. And then what happens? Your head coach gets COVID. And you have a bunch of other people that are out and may not be starting this week. Right. So like you said, I'm going with the – Steelers off rip just because of that. If if yeah. everybody was healthy, I was going to pick the Browns. Yeah, me too. I would have picked the Browns because I think that the Steelers. It's not about what you do throughout the season. It's about who's hot at playoff time, and they are yeah. not hot. They are not. They are. They are not. They are not hot. They are not. They have been slow roasting for the past four weeks, and and you you know culminating with Juju Smith-Schuster dancing on the Bengals logo and then proceeding to get his dick knocked in the dirt on, like, the third play of the game. And he turned right. into a TikTok meme, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and and he came out after this game, and he talked trash about the Browns. And in this case, he's going to be right because everybody's injured. It really don't matter what the hell he says in this game because they're going to go out there and they're going to beat the brakes off the Browns, which is unfortunate. But, yeah, I'm going with the Steelers in this game. Absolutely. Yeah. So those are the games uh, right now. And right now, I, I want to get into the Eagles and then the Sixers. Okay? You got to talk about, about the Sixers because. Oh, absolutely. absolutely man. You know what I mean? Because uh, the, the Eagles, what, what did you think about the last game of the season and them pulling Jalen Hurts, man? I want to hear your thoughts on that. I thought it was absolutely embarrassing, truthfully. I understand, you know, you have an opportunity for a better draft pick, but, you know, what kind of message does that send to the locker room? I really think that was a tank. I I think them pulling Jalen Hurts sent a very bad message. And I just – after seeing that, I felt as though they should have fired Doug Peterson right there and then. Like, you can't do that. You know, they had to hold some players back. I read on reports from the coach and just – it just put a very sour taste in my mouth for them to do that for those veteran pay- players that were possibly playing their last game, Zach Ertz, you know, last game with the Eagles, meaning, because Zach Ertz is probably gone just by the – I don't know if you saw his presser, but yeah, it is a good you know. chance. And it's very unfortunate, you know, and, I, and it killed me to see that. And what are your thoughts on it, man? I, just, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. You, like you said, you have guys on there that have played the whole year, and not just played the whole year. You're playing through injuries. You you're putting your blood, sweat, and tears on the line, and you're at you're asking me, me, me to play in week seventeen mm-hmm. when we have no prospect of making the playoffs. You're asking me to put my livelihood on the line for a game that makes no difference other than being a spoiler for other teams in the division, right? Right. And then in a game that I bust my ass in for three and a half quarters, you're then going to pull our quarterback who's the best chance of us winning that game for a guy that's only had, what, maybe one snap this year, if any? Yeah. Right? Like, what was Nate Sudfeld going to show you in this game that was going to boost his stock? Absolutely effing nothing. Yeah. It's all the scouts in the NFL. I'm not I'm not saying bad things about Nick Self. I'm just saying that they this GMs and the scouts have seen him in in cleanup time and in preseason games. They know what he is. They have a grade on Nate Sudfield. There's nothing in a quarter of football that he's gonna do to wow everybody like he's gonna be the next cousin uh Kirk Cousins or the next coming of Tom Brady. Like he mm-hmm. is what he is until he proves otherwise. So you're not going to boost his stock. All you're doing is tanking the game. And then you have guys on the sideline, side like Jason Kelsey, wondering, like, yo, why is Jalen Hurts got his shoulder pads off? What, what's, what's going on? Mm-hmm. I, 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 is he hurt? Like, what's the deal? Like, no, he, he ain't hurt. Is he mm-hmm. sick? No, he ain't sick. Well, well, why is he out the game? Oh, yeah, we, we want to get some, <laughs> some snaps. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> Why should I keep going out there? We ain't gonna win. He don't even know the game plan. But he didn't even game plan the whole week with Nate. Yeah, I, I knew it was a little fishy once I saw Carson Wentz and his uh, you know that he was inactive. So I, I had a little strange feeling that I'm like, 
Mm. I mean, at first I thought, okay, maybe they're doing that because they want to keep him healthy. Maybe they, maybe they, there's. I think there's a strong chance that he does get traded. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, it's, I, I kind of know from the get go. I had a bad feeling. No, nah, he. I think he's getting traded for sure. That that relationship is, excuse me, uh, so fractured at this point. Yeah. Things don't leak into the media by accident. Yes, yeah, no, they really don't. E- either, either two options. Either your agent has gone a wall, it's gone rogue, and it's just spewing out toxic, uh, uh, bull crap to the media, or you've given given him the green light to to say the things that you've been thinking for the past two or three months. One right. way or another, you're not putting you control what your agent puts out, so you're allowing him to do these things one way or another, which is all I need to really know. Right. These things are not getting out there by accident. And if you're not doing it, your teammates are saying it because you've been saying these things. Right. Do you Now, do you, in your opinion, do you think he's – see, in my opinion, as a professional, you should go out there and compete, you know, yeah. and, you know, earn your job, you know, earn your keep. You know, um, I, mm-hmm. I just don't mm-hmm. understand what the whole – I mean, they paid him a good amount of money. They um they guarantee him the starting job and they you know they pulled him the last couple of games because he wasn't playing well which I think he needed to sit on the bench because it, it just they were he was in a bad spot so do yeah. you think Carson Wentz has been kind of like could have been acting a little bit better or has you do you think he's been a baby at all or what do you think I don't think so I think that. He he seems like the type type of guy that going back to boxing, if Deontay mm-hmm. Wilder's corner didn't throw in the towel when he was going against Tyson Fury, Deontay mm-hmm. Wilder would have gotten seriously hurt. Right. He has that same mentality. Right. Carson Wentz needed to get benched to be able to take take a step back and get some perspective on the things he was doing wrong mm-hmm. and then be thrown back into the fire again. With right. with uh a, reju- a reju- rejuvenated sense of purpose and perspective on the things he needed to clean up. Mm-hmm. But to sit him, to, to make him a healthy scratch, that spoke volumes to me. Yeah. Right? You can, you, you can sit him because you're playing the hot hand. I understand that. But to make him a healthy scratch – that sent a message to me saying, not that we don't want to get you injured, but we don't believe in you anymore. Right. Yeah, it's, it just I, didn't look good. I don't know what was said behind closed doors, but that seemed like the team sending a message that yeah. we're moving yeah, that's on. What it seemed like to me. I mean, that was part of the reason that I was going to get into as well. But I thought, yeah, him being a healthy scratch, that just told me right there and then that there is a strong chance that he is not on this team next year. Right. Because you, you remember when the Patriots went on a Super Bowl run and Drew Bledsoe got hurt. He got the – he got hit on the sideline by Brian Cox, the linebacker for the Jets, 57, and mm-hmm. he had the puncture lung, right? Mm-hmm. And Tom Brady came in and had to fill in for him. But never do I recall him being a healthy scratch throughout the playoffs or – or on the road to the Super Bowl. Even with the Bills in 2000, the year that they lost to the Titans, the Miracle, uh, what was it, Motown Miracle? What, what the fuck was it called? Um, <laughs> whatever, the, the, the lateral to, right. to uh, Dyson, right? And that whole year, um, Rob Johnson was the quarterback, right? Mm-hmm. No, not the whole year. Rob Johnson was the starting quarterback. He was he was pretty much the future of that team. And then he got hurt. And Doug Flutie at 37 came in and lit it up and pretty much took them to the playoffs. Mm-hmm. But not once did I remember Rob Johnson being a healthy scratch as he was getting healthy. As soon as he got healthy, he was back in. And Rob right. Johnson wasn't even playing as well as Doug Flutie. Doug Flutie was top seven quarterback in football at that time, right? Right. And even him playing that well, like it was obvious 
you got to keep Flutie in. Like, Rob Johnson has not played in, like, 10 weeks. How are you going to throw him right into the biggest game of his life against mm-hmm. that Titans defense when Doug Flutie has been just – he he was the human torch. Like, he was on fire. And you're going to take him out, and it cost you. But, like I said, now one at one point in time, they – um, make him a healthy scratch, Rob Johnson. Right. right? Because he was the future. And right. they made Carson Wentz a healthy scratch, in my opinion, because they don't think that Carson Wentz is the future, even though they paid him. Mm-hmm. Right? And, yeah, it's, it's convenient that they drafted a quarterback for that reason, just in case. But even if they did not, I don't know if they wouldn't make the same sit- decision, right? Like, if, if Nick Foles – was playing at the level that he was in that Super Bowl run this year, mm-hmm. you know, and repeating what he did in that Super Bowl run, mm-hmm. do you not think that they might say, mm, we might pay Nick Foles for a two- or three-year deal and do the same thing that Carson Wentz is we're doing to him now? Right. So, you know, people are going to look at the situation like, oh, well, they drafted Jalen Hurst because that was the whole plan the whole time. You're probably right. However, mm-hmm. even if they did not draft Jalen Hurts and they had somebody that was coming in playing well, like a Nick Foles, I think they might do the same thing because they're looking at the return on investment, the ROI, and they're not believing that they're going to get great return for the stocks that they're investing in. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I absolutely agree. It's very unfortunate. I mean, I still believe – I think Carson is going to get traded to the Colts. Uh, I think he's going to work out something where his cap isn't – It's still. I think it's still going to be a costly trade. But it's – I think he's going to blow up in Indianapolis if he goes there, man. I really do. That's an interesting take, man. <laughs> it's Frank Reich, man. He's – he knows how to utilize Wentz, and I still think he can be good in this league. Uh, I just think it was a bad year, but I, I think it's a bad – he had a bad year. He's not a bad quarterback. He's, he's just had a really bad year on a bad team. So, but yeah, I still believe in him. And that's why I think that mm, – see, I have not seen enough of Jalen Hurts to make an honest, fair assessment on him. Right. Now, I, there, there are things he has to clean up, obviously. But I, I like a lot of things I saw out of him. I, I oh, me that, too, man. He looked good. I think good. that he brings uh, great potential to his team. However, I think that moving on from Carson Wentz is a mistake. It is, man. I think they're going to they're gonna regret it, and I think he's going to go somewhere else, and I think he's going to have a good year. Right. And to your point, if he goes to the Colts, if Phillip Rivers retires and he goes to the Colts, it's going to be a steal. Yeah, he is, and you're going to see it because you saw what Frank Reich was able to do with Carson Wentz is that his MVP year. Yep. Like, just in my opinion, I don't care. Like, he was MVP that year. He should have been MVP. Yeah. Like, it's, it's just – it's very unfortunate that he got hurt that year. I know. He, he should have been MVP. Even getting injured, he probably still should have been MVP. Absolutely agree. That just tells you everything you need to know. Yeah. It's uh, but you know, I think it's gonna bite us once he is traded, and he's gonna show us that he was well capable of being a good quarterback in this league. Yeah. So, what do you think the Eagles are gonna do in this draft coming up? Um, that they they might see. I, I'm not a big believer in Howie anymore in drafting, but. I think they may go receiver. It's either going to be Chase or Devontae Smith. Well, Devontae Smith's there because I think Miami could possibly take him. Yeah. Uh, I think they might go receiver. I'm hoping they go linebacker and get Persons. Mm, yes. From, I'll, uh, yeah, yeah. Talk about it. State, you know, because he's – he won the Buckus Award, I believe, in college. Mm-hmm. My but, um, Bill was telling me. So, it's – I really like him, man. And um, I haven't seen much of his highlights. I haven't really watched him, but from what I'm hearing from Bill, he sounds like he would he would be a really good pickup. We need we need a good linebacker. We haven't had a good, really good linebacker since what? Like, I mean, at least somewhat decent, D'Amico Ryan. Like, you know, so yeah. I mean, I've seen some highlights of this guy. He reminds me of Patrick Willis. 
Yeah, man. He's uh he's just the apps. Just uh, I gotta watch his highlights, but yeah. I heard he's an absolute stud. The disappointing thing is the defensive coaches under Andy Reid, they're not offensive guys, so they tend to go for linebackers. They 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 well they they place more stock into linebackers like excuse me. Um the coach of the Washington football team now. Ron Rivera. Ron Rivera. Luke Keekley. Perfect example, right? Yeah. And who was one of his defensive coaches on that Panthers team? I think Sean McDermott was on that Panthers squad for a little bit, right? Yeah, I, I think so. A year or two? Right. Right. So you're talking about two defensive guys and both under Andy Reid, both under Jim Johnson, more importantly, right? So, mm-hmm. like, they're under that Andy Reid tree, but Jim Johnson, I don't know what his philosophy was on defensive players because he had Trot, he had Dawkins, he had Hugh Douglas, he had a lot of those guys, but they were Ray Rose guys. They weren't drafted by Jim Johnson, and Andy Reid formulated his, his plan for how he wanted to build a team, and it for damn sure did not focus on safeties or linebackers. I can say right. that much. He just thought they were an expendable commodity. Which, to a certain extent, if you're looking at it logistically, they are. However, when you get that exceptional generational talent, you cannot overlook that. They just make such an impact on the field. Like this guy that you're talking about from Penn State, he's a sideline to sideline, three down guy that can go get after it. And the thing that happens when you have, especially a middle linebacker, you take away the short and intermediate routes and you force a, an offense to try to beat you with the big play more often than they would like to. You take away the bread and butter move this move the chains type of plays and it just changes the way you work like Luke Keekley, he he changed the way that offenses had to attack a defense like you cannot run these crossing routes against him you can't run crossing routes against him Patrick Willis Ryan Erlacher Ray Lewis or you die like that is that's what happens right they hit Man. you you die yeah, exactly. So you have to do something else, and it's going to change the way you do things. You're not going to be as um, – you're not going to take as many – you're not going to be as risk-happy. You're going to be risk-adverse. Right. Right? So when you have a chance to get one of these guys, me personally, I would go after him, like you're saying, but they won't. So since they won't, I would go after the guy Chase out of LSU. That would be the guy I'd be targeting or the guy Kyle Pitts out of Florida, the tight end, because he reminds me of Darren Waller 2.0. Yeah, he's a stud, man. I, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I heard. <laughs> the, 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 guy, the guy is uncoverable. He's, he is a wide receiver in a tight end's body, and it doesn't matter that he's labeled as a tight end. You can put him at a, a wide receiver, and he runs like a wide receiver. And if right. you want to put in 12 personnel, you can put him on the line. So for yeah. me, me personally – I would trade back like two spots if I could and pick up Kyle Pitts from Florida and just mm-hmm. pick up another pick and, and go from there because he's going to be your X factor. Either the dude from LSU, I take him first, or the guy from Florida, and then go ahead and get a cornerback in the second round or get a cornerback in the first round if you trade back and pick up another pick. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, I absolutely agree. And, you know, like you said, we haven't seen a lot from, um, Jalen Hurts yet to fully evaluate him and uh, my buddy Chris was telling me that like he's he's worked with some of the best quarterback coaches so you know I still have some belief in him you know I mean I saw a lot of really good things I saw more good than bad the past couple games he looked like eh but you also have to take into effect the team also as a whole was not good either so it's you know you have to take that into account the offensive line you know just was not good um, but you know, it's yeah, you know, I'm hoping for the best, man. And you know, I'm hoping we pick the right pick in this draft. I'm not getting my hopes up because I just, if Howard Rosen's in charge again, I don't have confidence in his drafting ability. We've seen it time and time again. It's unfortunate, but it's the way it is, man. Howie has been decent to very good with free agent pickups, but not yeah. with the draft. Yeah, I agree with that. That Super Bowl year, he did as good as you can do. He was pretty much a Madden GM that just went right on all his free agency p- 
picks that year. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, yo, kudos to him. I mean, that to do that, I don't know if that's ever been done. I mean, you turn around a team that people thought were just – they thought we were a dumpster fire after shit. And he right. turned us around not just in one year, but took us to a championship that we just never had. So, when you talk about the trade for Jay Ajayi, you talk about the acquisition of Al- Alshon Jeffrey in the offseason. Um, mm-hmm. Talk about Chris Long, like all these little things that add up, mm-hmm. and he has not done that when it comes to the draft, though, right? Yeah, and, I, I'm, and I was talking about uh, Stephon Diggs earlier, and it was the 2015 draft. It was right after Chip left, and I remember being mad about that draft because uh, no, 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 no. It was it was it was Chip's last year, and we drafted uh, the goat, Nas Nagor, right? Mm-hmm. And that was the draft um, where we missed out on Stefan Diggs. And Stefan Diggs, where was he drafted? Because we picked 21, I, I believe, 20 or 21 got Aguilar. Stefan Diggs was picked somewhere in the, I don't even see him in the third round. It might have been the fifth. So it was not the third. It's not in the third round, so it has to be the fifth round. Yeah, 146 to the Vikings in the fifth round. Stefan mm-hmm. Diggs. And to me, for all those teams to pass on him was mind-blowing to me, period. But at least for me, like, I I usually look at receivers because that's that's typically what the Eagles need Mm -hmm. and cornerbacks. And when I was going through the receivers, I saw Sammy Coates. I'm like, he's fast as hell. But Chris Conley, he's fast as hell. Uh, Both of them from Georgia, I believe, right? And but they're they're just not complete receivers. I get it. I'm just like, how are these guys getting picked over Tyler Lockett as well? How are these guys getting picked over Stefan Diggs? It was blowing my mind. Mm-hmm. Even Nelson Aguilar, I'm just like, I never heard of Nelson Aguilar. Um, he got picked over Stefan Diggs. I just uh I could not understand it. Right. Um like the people that I I wanted, um So, so one person we didn't get that I wanted was the linebacker, uh, Benardrick McKinney, who went to the Texans. I, I was kind of mad they didn't get him or Eric Kendricks. Yeah, Eric Kendricks I was really hoping for. Yeah, because the whole thing going to the draft was like, oh, man, Michael's here, so bring his brother here. Like, he's fast as, as well. So, like, and that would have been perfect. <laughs> yeah, Eric Kendricks is even better than Michael, man. Exactly. Opinion. Exactly. You would have had two sideline to sideline linebackers. Like, I don't see see, those things defy logic to me. And Mm -hmm. as a GM, you're thinking, look, linebackers, they're important, but they do not impact the game at the same level as a cornerback, a quarterback, a left tackle, or a Mm -hmm. wide receiver. Mm -hmm. I understand that. However, when you get a trend, uh, a guy that transcends, the typical ability of a guy playing that position, you can, you have to at least consider it. Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, that's like saying I'm drafting the guy that I think has the potential to be Jerry Rice over a guy that I think has the potential to be a Ray Lewis. Right. And I get, I get the logic. I would go for Jerry Rice over Ray Lewis. However, yeah. You have to at least consider taking Ray Lewis. It can't just be a foregone conclusion. Like you have to at least weigh it in your mind. It can't just be, whoa, wide receiver that's a Hall of Famer. I'm going after him. Fuck right. the linebacker that's a wide receiver. Uh right. that that that's a hall of, has Hall of Fame potential. Like you you can't not have that logic. I don't know if that's a logic you have, but it sure as hell seems like that's the logic that they have when they're going through these these war games and during the draft process. Right. Yeah, I don't understand it, man. Yeah, I, I just wish I, – I just hope maybe they'll hire someone who's better at evaluating talent, but I, I just – I don't understand it, man. It's just – I'm not – I ain't going to lie. I'm not a huge Howie guy anymore. I was, but – Yeah. Just, I, I just – his evaluation level with talent in the draft is just awful. There, JJ, I'm like a white side over oh. DK Metcalf. Don't – Oh, man, I can rant on and on. It's just Russell Wilson. Like you said, Stefan Diggs. It's it just – it goes on and on. It's just uh. 
it, you know, and people get mad about the Jeff, Justin Jefferson pick last year. Me, I wasn't even a Justin Jefferson guy, not because I didn't think he was a really good player. I just felt as though his main skills would be in the slot. Was I mm-hmm. wrong? Yes. Like, he turned out to be a phenomenal wide receiver. I can admit yeah, when I'm did. wrong. Um, mm-hmm. But, however, even if you didn't think he was the guy, and I don't think the Jalen Rager pick was a bad pick. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's a bad player. I think he has a lot of potential. However, you could have got yeah. him in the second round. Yeah. If you're going to take him that high, why would you not take – and somebody wanted him to take Denzel Mims. Like, he brings you speed, which you were looking for, and size. So why would you pick Jalen Rager over a Denzel Mims? It just defies logic to me. Yeah, I know, man. It's crazy. Because he's going to be a stud. I mean, it sounds odd to say it to anybody playing on the Jets, but he's going to be a stud for that team. Yeah. Yeah, I saw a lot of bright spots for Jalen Rager this year, man. He just – I forget what game it was where you yeah. said it looked like he was under the radar becoming our number one. But he he was really coming on that game. And then, like, I don't know, man. He's – his speed, man, it's – it's incredible to watch. So, that's what I'm saying. You put the dude from LSU across the field from Jalen Rager. I think that's a perfect one-two punch for whoever you want to have starting that quarterback last year, next year. I feel bad for defensive coordinators but looking at that matchup, man. <laughs> that's what I'm saying, man. So I think Jalen Rager is going to be a – even if he's not a number one, he'll be a 1A. Like, he's, he's going to be really good, yeah, I think. I agree. Could have even been better. Never know. Yeah, but even with that, it's it's not about the caliber of the player. It's just about you not knowing how to leverage your assets. Like, you didn't need to draft him with the first pick. You could have gotten another player to fill in that spot, um, like Antoine Winfield Jr., who's on the Bucks, who I was very high on last year. I, we actually did – yeah, we did a, we did a, we did a, um, an episode on Antoine Winfield. We was reacting to the highlights, remember? Yeah, he looked he looked really good, man. And the, I remember watching his highlights. He he looked like a stud. And sure enough, he has been a stud for that Buccaneers defense, man. <laughs> yeah, yo, we did we did a video. Uh, it's on it's on Instagram. We put up I put up a, a highlight clip of us reacting to Anton Winfield Jr.'s highlights. Yeah. Him at yeah. um Minnesota, I believe, right? Yeah. And it's like you could have picked Antoine Winfield Jr. in the first round, and then in the second round, going and got. Jalen Rager and, and address two spots instead of fucking up and drafting Jalen Rager in the first round and getting Jalen Hurts mm-hmm. in the second round. Now, all right. Again, Jalen Hurts, I think a high caliber talent. However, was he going to help you this year? No. No, not at all. You could address the defense on the back end with Winfield Jr. and then gotten your wide receiver in Rager and been in a better spot. Oh, absolutely. It's backwards thinking. Like, you're thinking for the future, but you're drafting high because you don't know how to properly evaluate talent so that you don't have to draft that high. You could have drafted in the third round if you're properly evaluating people. hmm You're drafting high because you're trying to minimize the risk of you missing on the right target. Right. You need to really do an an evaluation up and down the board of your scouting department, like you said, because there's there's a reason why the Steelers draft wide receivers, Hall of Fame wide receivers, later in the draft. Antonio Brown, Lynn Swan, Heinz Ward, Juju Smith Schuster. Like Damn. you're not talking to Juju might have been a first round or second round, whatever. But um Antoine Randall L. Like you go down a list, like you're talking about fifth. Rounders, fourth rounders, and beyond, like John Stallworth. Like you're, you're talking about, like they they just know how to draft wide receivers. There's something in them that they see. Very simple. They catch well. They can get open. I draft them. Mm-hmm. What about their scouting department is so different from the Eagle scouting department? I don't know what it is, but it, there is an obvious difference oh, in absolutely. philosophy. Yeah. Even with their defense, they draft linebackers, and they draft them very well. Mm-hmm. They, they're like linebackers are very important, where the Eagles are like linebackers, I could care less. Yeah, pretty and much. how many rings do the Steelers have? Uh, quite a few. <laughs> right. And they draft linebackers consistently, like incessantly, and they draft them very well. Bud Dupree. 
Yes, Ryan Shazier, you know, if he did not get injured, you know, thank God that he's walking again and doing well. But if he ain't got injured, you know what he was going to be. This guy's a monster. That, yeah, and that was a draft pick. I was mad at the Eagles for not drafting him. I remember that pick. I'm like, yo, yeah. he is right there. Like, he is a game changer. Oh, absolutely. Like, you don't pass on guys like that. And they draft these guys. They get the Joy Porters. They get the Brian Shaziers. They get the Brad Dupree's. They get the, the uh, T.J. Watts. And they go out and they ball and they just intimidate people. Was, the Steelers do it the best. And then the Ravens are like, oh, they're smart. I'm going to copy them. Ray Lewis. <laughs> uh, um, the Joy, not Joey Porter, um, the other Porter, um, Jamie Porter. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, T Sizzle. Like, they always get linebackers, bro. Yeah, man. Even even with the, the, the Bengals. They're like, we're the Bengals, but, hey, they're smart. We're going to start doing the same thing, too. They get linebackers. Yeah, man. The Browns. Do the Browns. They're like, we're just – we suck every year. Hey, we get our bricks beat off every year by them. Let's copy them and look at them now. Yeah, man. So, it's, it's – it's frustrating, I know, man. <laughs> it's like, can we just – can you imagine how much better they would be if they actually got a superstar linebacker? If they if they draft persons, man, I'm telling you, that defense is going to be much better. Teams get so wrapped up in – chicks dig the long ball in baseball. Chicks yeah. dig, chicks dig the, the 60-yard bomb in football. Those that watch the game, right? Mm-hmm. Every, everybody wants to be flashy, but when it comes to the playoffs – the weather gets cold. Yeah. Hand fingers get numb. People drop the ball. And you're not the Kansas City Chiefs. And even them, even them, when it comes down to it, they have to run the ball. Right. And what do you need against teams that run the ball? A defense. And what's the best way to stop the run? A fucking linebacker. Yeah. <laughs> you have a good defensive line, and then at least one linebacker that can come off that can shoot the gaps because he's not getting hit with blocks. He can come off through the A-gap and just crush a running back. That's how you win football games. Absolutely, man. It's – it's. I don't know, man. I just Even if your secondary it. sucks, right? Even if your secondary sucks. If you get pressure on the quarterback, you can you can mask a bad secondary. Hell, the Giants did it on their, their first Super Bowl run. Their, their secondary was trash. They just had that NASCAR front. Mm-hmm. Their secondary was hot garbage, right? But they had yeah. Strahan, they had Tuck, they had OCU Manure, and they just got after Tom Brady and everybody in the playoffs. It didn't matter that their secondary was trash. It really did not. No. It didn't then, they, then they had the, uh, the linebacker, what was his name? Um, Pierce, Antonio Pierce. Mm-hmm. Right. right? Yeah. One 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 really phenomenal linebacker and three phenomenal defensive linemen just changed their whole playoff hopes, right? Yeah. They did not have them. There's no way in fuck they would even be sniffing a Lombardi trophy. But they were yeah. smart, and they built around that. It's one yeah. thing. The Eagles are smart in that they built around the trenches. That, that wholeheartedly, they are smart in subscribing to that theory. However... They fail to build up the middle. They fail to see the importance in having a a really phenomenal middle linebacker and a great safety, so that mm-hmm. teams cannot. We we're playing chess, not not checkers, right? Right. If you're a really good chess player, you know that the goal of game goal of the game is to control the middle of the chessboard. If you control the middle of the chessboard, you limit your opponent's options. You really paralyze their offense. If, yeah. you put, if you have two pawns in the middle of the chessboard uh, mm-hmm. supported by other pieces, you can really be a absolute headache for anybody trying to maneuver around you. Like They're going to have to put so much energy in trying to flank your position. All right? Meanwhile, you're setting them up for other things. So like, if you're constantly having to worry about, I can't run the slam route because Jeremiah Trotter is going to take my wide receiver's head off. Mm-hmm. I, I can't run this skinny post up the middle because Brian Dawkins is going to light him up like your first Christmas tree, right? Mm-hmm. It changes the way you approach the game. Mm-hmm. It, it, it just does. Yeah, it and really does. it's just the Eagles, 
for the life of them just do not understand that. I, I they just don't, man. They don't put any stock into drafting those positions and it's it shows up in the playoffs and those tight games that you lose look in that year that we won people talk about Nick Foles and he was phenomenal I get it but the defense the shit don't matter yeah shit don't matter yeah Malcolm Jenkins Mm -hmm. up the middle right Fletcher Cox you didn't have a great middle linebacker I get it but you have Fletcher Cox in the middle Malcolm Jenkins in the middle. And tell me how difficult, even with suspect cornerbacks, tell me how difficult it was to beat that defense because up the middle, you were stout. You run yeah. up the middle, not happening, dog. Go somewhere else. We know you're going to run to the boundaries because you can't run against Fletch. And if you want to throw up the middle, you're not going to get a lot of completions against Malcolm Jenkins. So what are you going to do? You're going to do what we dictate to you. Yeah. You eliminate stuff. This is... Yeah, man. I, I feel you. Rant over. But yeah, that's that that's how I feel on them. And um briefly the Sixers. Yeah, they had a they had a rough game the other night against the Brooklyn Nets, but it happens. I get it. Um I hope hope that Seth Curry gets healthy because he has the vid, unfortunately. It's a difference maker to that team, man. He really has been yeah. a good pickup for us. Seth Curry has been balling out for us. He has, what, like one of the highest um, three-point percentages in the NBA right now. Mm-hmm. And it's just been lights out. Like, he's – they clearly miss him. I think they clearly did miss him that night. And I, I really like Doc Rivers, what I've seen out of him so far. Yeah. Yeah, they – um, it's going to be interesting when they start getting the tougher matchups. So I want to see how they grow within these first 20 games and then how they progress moving forward because you have Denny Green and you have Seth Curry. Mm-hmm. You just open up everything on offense. You you can't double and beat because teams have been doing that and they've been paying for it now because Seth Curry is averaging 17 a game. Yeah. Then Tobias is averaging 19 and then MB is averaging 25. Like how do you deal with that? Yeah, that's a <laughs> that's a that's a nightmare on on offense, man. That's they're they're going to be good all this year, man. It's like you said, it's going to be even more interesting when they get into the tougher matchups. When they do eventually, like when they run into the Nets again, they play the Nets again this year, don't they? Oh, for sure. Yeah, so th- they're eventually going to have Kevin Durant back. Um, you know, uh, or uh, what's his name, Kyrie. Kyrie, yeah, the flat earther. Yeah, you're gonna have all those good players. So and yeah. then you, you know, we'll have Seth Curry back. I'm sure by that time. So it's it'll be real interesting to see. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm definitely excited for Sixers this year, man. They're off to a good start. Yeah, and then next time we reconvene, we'll have to talk about the Flyers because they're coming up on the 13th, four days. Oh, so I'm excited, man. I'm yeah. ready. Yeah, this is, a, this is a good young team. They they were a little bit inexperienced last year in the playoffs. However, they still played well, and I I, I love what they did. Um, yeah, me too, man. Yeah. Learning had, experience. We'll get you, better. You have your goalie of the future in Carter Hart. Young. He's young, man. He's, he's only going to get better. Yeah, if he can become 70% of what King Lundquist was in his career, I would take that. Oh, absolutely, man. Definitely excited for the Flyers. Yeah. Lindblom is back. And, you know, the cancer is in remission or completely gone from what I know. So that's that's God really good him. news. Yeah, that's great news. Yeah. That, that, that tells you, man, count your blessings. The kid's only 23 getting over cancer. You never know what your next day is going to be or if you're going to get it next day. Yeah, exactly. Don't take uh, life for granted. Yeah, exactly. So, hey, I mean, we covered a lot today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get to, to watching this first game. Uh, great episode, as, as usual. We're going to get back to it and talk about these games and do a recap on it. But um, till next time, I'm Jen. This is Brian from Sportscast. We're going to holler at y'all, man. Be safe. Enjoy the games and see y'all later. Peace. Peace.